1921, the verdict was still out on aircraft carriers for the Royal Navy. At that time, the carriers in service were very limited in their capabilities. The most capable, Argus, at 14,500 tons, was serving with the Atlantic Fleet. Pegasus, 3,000 tons, was serving with the Mediterranean Fleet and had only a few seaplanes. Finally, Ark Royal, 7,080 tons, was more of a floating aircraft depot ship at this point and it was debated to whether or not the latter two should even be considered aircraft carriers. While there were three carriers under construction or conversion, with Hermes in Devonport, Eagle in Portsmouth, and Furious at Rosyth, the Royal Navy had a decision to make, as there was a board policy that Glorious and Courageous, the other two large light cruisers from Admiral Fisher's building project in 1914, should be converted into aircraft carriers. If this were done, the Royal Navy would have a distinct advantage in aircraft carrier capabilities over their rivals, for the time being at least. While if it was not done, the Royal Navy would have distinctly inferior carriers as regards speed and the number of aircraft that could be carried. Given the need for fast carriers and the fact that the United States was converting the battlecruisers Saratoga and Lexington, the Admiralty ordered the conversion of Glorious and then Courageous. As for their original configurations, they would be as follows as of 28th January 1915, would be 17,400 tons, later to be 17,800 tons. The machinery for 90,000 shaft horsepower with a top speed of 32 knots, an armament of four 15-inch guns and two twin turrets, 16 4-inch guns, three 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, along with five Maxim machine guns and two torpedo tubes. As for armor, they would have side armor of 3 inches amidships and 2 forward, barbettes of a maximum thickness of 7 inches, a conning tower thickness of 10 inches, and the armor on the main turrets would vary in thickness at 13, 11, and 7 inches, along with a torpedo bulkhead of 3 quarters of an inch and a maximum deck thickness of 1 inch sloped. Being eager for the conversion of these two vessels, as the cost of conversion was about as half as expensive as building a new carrier. By October of 1923, the controller gave verbal instructions to go ahead with the complete reconstruction of Glorious and Courageous, with outline sketches showing the cutting away of the main structure and armor required, following the same general idea for reconstruction as Furious. Taking from R.A. Burt, British Battleships, 1919 to 1945, the alterations to the structure and fittings that were cut away are changed. Structures above the forecastle deck were removed generally, including all bulkheads, shelter deck, conning tower, director towers, mass main derrick, bridges, funnels, uptakes, and boiler room vents down to the main deck. All the guns and all the boats on the forecastle deck, alterations include the removal of coal wenches, communication pipes were removed, and all holes on the various decks were filled in with plating, notably where the two 15-inch gun turrets were along with the gun barbettes removal, station bulkheads in the various sections associated with the functions of the turrets being removed. In that same vein, magazines and shell rooms for the 15-inch and 4-inch guns were cleared out. The next question that came up was that of armaments for Courageous, as it had already been decided that Glorious would carry 10 5.5-inch, 6 4-inch, and 4 pom-pom guns. Although there are enough 5.5-inch guns left for Courageous, there were some in the Admiralty that thought a stronger 6-inch battery might be preferable for the carrier, as there was a large supply of 6-inch guns from scrapped cruisers. Most were worn out and would require considerable servicing. Several layouts for Glorious and Courageous were created, including some with 8-inch batteries, as it was thought that surface attacks from light cruisers might break through and attack the carriers, or that a carrier might lose its position due to flight operations and not have immediate support from escorting vessels. However, after a thorough investigation in February and March of 1922, it was decided that having more high-angle guns for air defense was more suitable for the carriers. It seemed more advantageous to have a similar caliber to Furious with the 5.5-inch. Still, they would change the final armament. Since these ships would be converted, it was difficult to meet the three essential qualities of an aircraft carrier. 1. A suitable armament. 2. A high speed. and 3. A good aircraft carrying capacity and they could not fit large-caliber high-angle guns without interfering with the operations of the vessels as carriers. Nevertheless, faced with these issues, the Director of Naval Construction investigated several alternatives with these designs in greater detail, these being designs C, H, and J, with designs H and J being modifications of C, with C having eight single 6-inch guns and six 4-inch high-angle guns. The highlights for design H were that the six high-angle 4-inch guns found on C were replaced by 10 total 4.7-inch high-angle guns. 
the four after six inch guns being removed and to keep the 4.7 inch guns supplied with ammunition and to not interfere with the remaining six inch guns, some of the hangar space would have to be used for that purpose. Design H carrying 51 aircraft. Design J would see the complete removal of all six inch guns and the armament being comprised entirely of 4.7 inch guns, 18 in total, and Design J would have a carrying capacity of 52 aircraft. The pros and cons of designs H and J were laid out in the letter and it was decided that J was preferred over H. The conversions would take place from 1924 until 1928 for Courageous and 1930 for Glorious. The armor scheme did not change from the original configuration besides the addition of a 5 8 inch thick flight deck. Much like Furious, Courageous and Glorious had two flying off points, with an upper and lower flight deck with the top flight deck rounding off to a point, as well as having two lifts to serve the two hangars. The hangars would be similar in size to their half-sister Furious, whose lower hangar was 550 feet in length and 50 feet in width, while the upper hangar was 520 feet in length and about 50 feet in width, the hangars being a bit larger and courageous and glorious. Unlike Furious, they would have a bridge superstructure as part of their conversion, with the funnel taking up two-thirds of it. Throughout the 1930s, the carriers would see several alterations, notably with different masts and directors for the numerous guns found on board. Each ship would see individual changes, like the addition of armor plating to different places on the flight deck. One large addition would take place in 1936 when Glorious would have her flight deck extended aft, creating a much smoother landing experience for the pilots. One interesting note is that in 1938, a proposed conversion to have the carriers have a single hangar, with the apparent advantages being that it would be easier to handle the aircraft and protect them with more armor plating and perhaps increase capacity. To give some particulars for the ships, as of 1935, Glorious would come in at 24,970 tons, and Courageous, as of 1928, would weigh 24,210 tons. Their machinery would remain unchanged, and would provide for a speed of just under 30 knots. As for armaments, they would carry 16 4.7-inch dual-purpose guns, 33 pounder saluting guns, and in 1935, Glorious would have 24 two-pounder guns added, and 8 triple mountings, and in 1936, Courageous would have 12 two-pounder guns added, as well as they both carried half-inch anti-aircraft guns. As for aircraft complements, Glorious would carry a little under 50 aircraft as her maximum complement. It was a little difficult to get an exact figure, while Courageous would effectively operate 52 aircraft a little after the end date of her completion. As time went on, the flights that they carried changed, and for example in 1940, Glorious carried Skuas torpedo bombers and Gladiator fighters. To briefly cover their history, starting with Glorious, following her conversion, she would begin trials as a carrier on January 30th, 1930, where she would be commissioned as a carrier just a little under a month later, in February, and spent her first couple months with the Atlantic Fleet. Then in June, she was sent to the Mediterranean until October of 1939. During her time in the Mediterranean, she would have an incident. On April 1st, 1931, at 4.30 p.m., in a dense fog, she collided with the French liner SS Florida with Glorious's lower flying off deck buckling for about 60 feet from the fore end, the cable deck being completely smashed, with the armor plates being torn off and damaged to the surrounding bulkheads. She would be repaired in Gibraltar and Malta. Then in July of 1934 until July of 1935, she would have an extensive refit at Devonport. Moving on to October of 1939, she would join the search for the Admiral Graf Spee, being a part of Force J for operations in the Indian Ocean. Returning to the Mediterranean fleet in December until April of 1940, where she was sent to the home fleet to assist in the Norwegian campaign. From April to June, she would provide air cover for convoys, troop landings, and attack airfields in Norway. However, she was attacked and sunk by Scharnhorst and Neisenau on the 8th of June 1940, something we covered in the series in the Neisenau, although I would like to make this subject its own video at some point. As for Courageous, she would be commissioned as a carrier in May of 1928 for service with the Mediterranean Fleet, where she would spend the next two years when Glorious would relieve her in June of 1930. She would be refit in the United Kingdom and sent to the Atlantic Fleet to replace Argus, again spending two years with the Atlantic Fleet, and continued her service with the redesignated Home Fleet until December of 1938, wherein she was relieved by Ark Royal and used as a training carrier until August of 1939 where in September she sailed for the Atlantic to conduct offensive operations against enemy submarines and was sunk by U-29 on September 17th. I hope you all have enjoyed this look at the conversion and operations of these two carriers. 
I plan on making videos on their various sinkings, as they both deserve more time and attention. Be on the lookout for the sinking of Courageous in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, good luck my friends, and please remember to like and subscribe, as it will help the channel to grow.